The BBC recently highlighted the plight of an Adélie penguin colony in the Antarctic, whose chicks are starving. We caught up with renowned cameraman and polar explorer Doug Allen on Skype, and he kindly explains over some of his penguin shots what's going on with the Adélies. Adélies, I think, are the most character-filled of the penguins. The, the emperors you would admire for their stoicism through the winter, but Adélies are the ones that are most like real people. When you sit on the edges of an Adélie colony and you watch life going on there, there's a bit of squabbling, there's obviously an intense bond between the partners and their chicks and things like that. They find a partner when they're three or four years old and it's possible to have the same partner for the next seven, eight, nine years that they're going to be able to breed. So it's, fair, it's great to, to watch them. They're real characters. So this uh, news headline talks about a catastrophic event in a daily penguin colony. What do you think is happening? Well, what's happened basically is that um, when their daily chicks hatch and as they grow up, the adult penguins come and go from the sea to feed their chicks. Um, and these penguins, the daily penguins, sometimes have to swim 40, 50 miles from the colony. They go out there, they feed on krill, and they come back. And they still have enough food in their stomachs to regurgitate food for their chicks. But what's happened in this case is that, unusually for, this, for, uh, for a summer season, there's been a lot of ice still at sea. So it's no longer a straight line from the colony to the feeding point and back in again. There's lots of zigzagging, diving underneath the flows. All that takes longer and it also takes more energy. So basically, the feeding trips are taking longer. And by the time the dailies get back to the colony, they've digested all the food that they took in simply for their own energy. And they've got nothing left to give the chicks. So the chicks, unfortunately, die. Okay, keep going round, this is nice. Keep going a little bit faster. Now, I've been going up and down to the Antarctic since 1976 and um, to and from the Arctic since 1988. So I've got a long-term view on, on both of those environments and I can tell you and certainly a daily distribution down on the Antarctic Peninsula has changed dramatically. We filmed the dailies. The dailies were a key um, character in, our, in, in the series Life in the Freezer, which we filmed in 91-92. If you go back to the colonies of the dailies that we filmed then, the colonies there are just a shadow of what they used to be. There's less than a quarter of the daily penguins now than there used to be. Up in the Arctic, um, I was there at the end of what I'd call the stable period, when you could guarantee pretty much almost to the day when the ice would start to do things through the summer, when it would break up. Well, those days are gone now. The ice breaks up in, in different patterns. You know, the, the, the days that when it broke up, give or take a month now, here or there. There are big, big changes happening, and they are very definitely being seen at the poles. Challenges that perhaps climate sceptics, those who still disbelieve climate change, could say, look, you know, this is exactly the opposite of what we'd expect. The Antarctic's supposed to be warming. Why is there more sea ice there than, than there is usually? And the fact is that the Antarctic sea ice circulation and formation is, is very complicated. It's actually more complicated in the Antarctic, it's still around about the southern continent, than it is up in the Arctic, the North Pole. Because let's bear in mind that up in the Arctic, what you have is a frozen ocean around the North Pole, surrounded by continents, surrounded by a land mass, whereas the Antarctic, the South Pole, is completely the opposite. The Antarctic is a frozen continent at the South Pole, surrounded by a large land mass with the ocean on the other side of it. So 150 miles from this particular colony, there was a giant um, tongue of ice used to stretch out from the coast, and that tongue of ice broke off about 10 years ago, and because it broke off, it actually changed the currents, it changed the ocean circulation in the immediate area of this colony, and there is some idea that perhaps what we might be seeing is, is a long-term change in the ice around that area. It could be that the, that the Adelis were managing, despite the ice, to get to their normal feeding areas, but when they got there, maybe there wasn't enough krill for them to feed on. So therefore, when they came back to the colony, they didn't have enough in their stomach. Krill is this tiny little crustacean which exists in vast numbers in the Antarctic. 
But it, the distribution of petrol has been shifting, partly because of climate change moving the, the currents, but also because there's quite a lot of krill fished in the Antarctic. So it's interesting that uh, I believe there's a meeting coming up which is, is going to look at this whole business of krill fishing and possibly tighten down the regulations and establish much more of the Southern Ocean as a no-fishing zone so that <clears throat> at least we can be sure in the future if krill isn't being fished, then at least human beings aren't affecting that side of the krill distribution. There's a powerful lobby in the world still trying to get you trying to get people to believe that climate change doesn't exist but i think increasingly more and more people are deciding that climate change exists and it's people who are important it's people who will make the change and we could change to all change very quickly to all manner of new ways of doing things which could save us a lot of, which could save us the consumers a lot of money but which could save governments a whole lot of money and i think that that surely it would be sensible to, to push these things forward sooner rather than later just better safe than sorry but not only that but better planet in the future